Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So remember we picked off, um, picked up from last video where I said we had multiple ways to do it. Let me recap what we had. We had Bishop takes f6, threatening d4, saying if you take back, I'm going to take back. Okay, second option was queen to f5, saying I'm going to take on f3, I'm going to infiltrate, get some schnickerdoodles. And the third option was pawn takes, king over, rook for the check, and swoop down here. So what did I go for? I went for option three. King h1, f5. And I said, and I was like, at this point, I was like, because I saw, I saw this move rook g1. And I said, if I go king h8, well then what about something like, um, I forgot what, what move it was. It was um, maybe bishop h6? I, I honestly don't remember. It was something about this file, right? It might have been knight g5. Or maybe it was bishop g5. Something like that. I don't know. But to me, I sensed a little bit of a danger here. But I said, let's fight on. King h8. Bishop to g5. And at this point, I was I was like, wow. I'm going to take your knight. And here I was expecting f takes e4. Because I have a few options. I can take this pawn on d4 and make this diagonal extremely wide open. I can play queen c6 and just keep the tension on the e4 pawn. I can sack for the rook and bishop for my queen, or I can go to b7 or a8. At this point, I would think I would go back to c6 or b7, but it's hard to tell. Um, but instead in the game, our friend Anton played bishop takes h4. Played bishop takes, queen takes e4, and I was like, Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to trade. I like to trade. Because why? I am. I have five pawns. Our friend Anton has six pawns. But after we trade, I get another pawn. And all of a sudden, we have the same amount of pawns. The only difference is I have a bishop. Extra bishop. It's going to do the job. Right? So after... Rook G to D1. I'm like, Rook E to D8. I said, you know, if um, you play D5, well, that's okay. I would play E5, or I can take and just have some fun. So D5, I decide, let's take. Now, my other option was I could play E5 and the move Bishop to D4 and just dominate the center. Could have also done that. And I said, I, did, I decided take, take, rook d6. And I said, I'm going to pile up. I'm going to play b5, and I'm going to snatch off this pawn. Rook c2, bishop to h4. I'm going to relocate to f6, b3, b5. Nothing much. Now at this point, you can see my moves aren't of the highest accuracy. Reason is that I have like five seconds left, and by five seconds I mean it's gone, and there's no delay. There's, it's pretty much a no delay game. You do it or you die. Right? B3, B5. I was just moving on increment this time. Now, one thing that Anton could have done is take, take, and rook to D4, saying, I'm going to attack this, I'm going to attack this. But a4 happened, and I said, I'm going to play a6, a takes, a takes, and now pawn b4 was an inaccuracy again. Because remember, take, take, rook d4. It's always in the bag. These two things are on the same rank. So if they're on the same rank, you can get them, right? So then b4 happened, and I was like, wow, thank you. So I played bishop f6. I was about to cement my pawn on c3. Rook f1, c3. 
king g2, bishop g7. So at this point, I have no time. I have like two seconds pre-moving. I'm ready to say I lost on time. This is going to be it. Rook f5, rook c4. I'm still playing good moves, but I have one second left. King f3, rook takes. King e3, h6, just giving some breathing room for my king. Even though in a normal position, I would play rook b2. King d3, rook b2. And at this point, you take on c3, bishop takes, rook f8, and guess what? I am out of time. So this was actually the first game I had ever um, lost in a simul. And I think it was a moment of history for us all. It was it was a very interesting experience. I was definitely not discouraged by it. I, I felt like, you know, sometimes it really hurts to lose on time. But you can't really blame yourself all the time. Because, you know, you tried your best. And sometimes you had other things to do. And sometimes you just, you flagged. And that's hard. It's hard to accept. For a lot of Blitz players who are very competitive, and they go like, ah, they break their mouth, slam their mouth. You know, that that's not the kind of rage we're here to send. Right? If it's for prize money, well, maybe I get it. But if it's for a normal game, and your opponent's just being a bad sport, and, and not resigning, and they just want to flag you, well, then... Maybe they just have good mouse skills. I mean, it's personally up to you how you want to react. But I always like to say react with positive, benevolent intention. Don't just take it light. Have fun. That's the main part. Let's get into the game. So enough with my inspiration talk. Uh, Bishop B7. So at this point, the opening was great. It was all great. It's all great. We did all the things fine. But now came a series of opportunities for me where I could play f6. I missed that, and I never did. Somehow didn't, so I ended up in this very passive situation. Knight f1, so now Anton is having the upper hand in terms of maneuvers. Rook c8, knight g3, and now I'm finally starting to open up. Bishop d3, knight c4. And for me, this is the move that decided the game. Now, I'll point to moves that in one move decided the game, but this is one of them. Bishop takes c4. Because why did it give me the game? Well, if you saw later in the game, I took on f3, knight to h4, queen to d5. It was all because of this one diagonal. And if the diagonal had not been opened, well, then this bishop would have never gotten to reach f3. If rook c2 or queen e2 happened, then things would have gotten more tough, complicated, right? But because of this move, I was able to find ideas to open on the right path, right? And maybe there was some complexity here, but especially with the end game, it just made my life easier, and I know I didn't play the best in the end, that was because I didn't have time. Um, you know, overall, I'm proud of what I did, and that's okay if I lost rating points to our friend Anton Yira. I lost like 90-something rating points. It hurts sometimes, but rating points are merely an indication of how you're doing. I mean, sometimes it may not reflect your true status, right? But that's okay. There's always room to just experience the positives and keep going with your do what you're doing because we're all doing great here. So rook b2, and I got flagged here. So let's move on to the second game against Anton, where I got flagged again. I had no time. But, um, spoiler alert, I was winning again, but that's okay. d4, d5, knight f3. So this is, we're not doing much. This is what we call the Zuckertor. 
variation. This the Zucker tort variation. It's if I remember correctly, there is this person named Zucker tort. It was from a while ago, but think of it as like a lot of openings are named after this this random guy who said, I'm gonna play it, I play it often, and I win. It's all that matters, you get your name. So like for example, there is this American grandmaster named Yasser Sarawan. Might have heard of him. Wonderful, wonderful man. Wonderful just everything he does. A lot of care. Puts a lot of heart into it. And he has um the Sarawan variation of something, but let's get into the game. Bishop to f4, c5, e3, knight c6, c3, knight f6, h3, bishop to d7. So at this point, bishop to d7, well, mm -hmm. um, bishop to d7, well, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't really say it's a inaccuracy per se, but to me, it's sort of like, you know, if you develop the bishop to d7, one thing is that you got to look at where you're headed towards, right? The bishop on d7, well, it's being blocked off by him, blocked off by him, and I would suggest in this variation that you develop this guy first, because um, it's hard to say this, but this bishop really has no future here, right? And you're thinking, I want to get all the pieces involved, because later on, most of the time, you will see that if you don't get a piece involved ever, you're going to lose the game, right? A game that you win usually requires all your troops, right? In some way, whether it's behind the scenes preparation, whether that means maneuvering, like a very interesting person, to just to sort out different positions on the map, or you know, whether it's just, I'm playing the defensive role, I'm defending my pawns, they're all playing a role in this game, right? But bishop d7, I'm just saying, there's no future for this boy. I wish he had a future, but I kind of feel like this bishop would belong on this diagonal a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Bishop d7, knight bd2, c4. So, C4, I think, is... I don't think it's a move. I would say the only reason why it may not be a move is because... Here you've essentially established this pawn structure. You close this down. It might be a move, in fact, but I don't know. Here, black has the idea to push this way. I completely get it. I think it's a, it's a very interesting idea. I've seen it in a few Grandmaster games, and... Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now, how does white counter this? Well, queen c2, e4, maybe some knight e5, something in the center, right? Maybe sometimes b3, a4, try to break down this structure. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So queen c2, bishop to e7, bishop to e2, castles, and now e4. You're seeing that I'm breaking through, I'm saying, I cannot stand this any longer. I gotta break. Right? Sort of like when we saw in our last game with Anton, the French. I had to break with f6. So b5, castles, a5. And at this point, you're seeing that Anton is carrying out the push that I suggested. And he knows it as well. So credits to you, Anton. You're doing all the great work. So 95 happens, and I'm saying, okay, if you take here, I might take with a pawn. I'm saying you, your knight might have to move, right? So I, here, Anton says, I take, I took with the pawn. Now, I could also take with the bishop. Now, I could move my bishop to f3. That's also a move. But I played pawn ticks. And after 98, I said, what is my goal here? Well, I want to break this wall. And what is my next move? Bishop f3, bishop c6, and rook a to d1. So I will explain to you why that rook is brought to d1, but I will see you in the next video.